These five harsh truths took me from weak, doubting myself, and failing to mentally strong, confident, and achieving my goals. Let's get started with number one. So I was reading in David Goggins' book, Can't Hurt Me, about how he had been a failure in early life, and this time when I was reading it, something really struck me that I'd never thought about before. You might already know Goggins' early life story. He had an abusive father, he was illiterate till 16, he was kind of the guy who had no role model, and nobody was looking out for him in life, and this led him to a place where he was basically just failing in life. He had no purpose in high school. He was skipping class, failing everything, and he was going nowhere. But eventually, he found inspiration and made some real changes. He stopped skipping class and got his grades up, so he was able to graduate, and he went to pararescue school in the Air Force. Things were looking up for him. It seemed like your classic self-improvement story that a lot of us have been through. You're living for cheap pleasure, your life has no purpose, but you find something that stirs you, and you get out of this place and you start moving towards a goal. But this isn't the end of Goggin's story. You see, he was terrified of the water and of swimming, and a big part of pararescue school is done in the water. Goggins was surviving the training, but he was full of doubt and fear, and eventually he found an excuse to quit. The challenge had gotten too big for him, and he crumbled under the pressure. He was discharged from the Air Force, and his life quickly began to spiral, to the point where he ended up 300 pounds working for minimum wage for a pest control company. Company. And this made me realize a lot of people have gone through this exact same story. I know I have. When I was 20 years old, I also had no purpose in my life. I was in college, but I was just there because it seemed like the next thing to do. I didn't really care to be there and I wasn't trying. I was failing classes. I was smoking weed, getting drunk, just kind of wasting time. But eventually I had to look myself in the mirror and be like, dude, this is not it. You are on the verge of completely failing in life. Like Goggins, I had to make a change. And so I did. I cut out the weed. I got on a personal development development grind, and I decided to go get my real estate license. This was probably the first time in my life that I ever actually tried 100% at something. I probably studied six to eight hours a day for my real estate exam for five months. I needed an 80 to pass the exam, and I got an 81. I barely passed by giving it everything I had, and I'll never forget it. I was so proud of myself. It was one of these times, maybe the first time genuinely in my life, where I had really committed to something and I'd achieved my goal. Only about 50% of the class passed and I was one of the only younger people who did. Most people who pass the real estate exam are usually older and have some experience with real estate. I was riding on a high when I started my career as a real estate agent and the deals seemed to just kind of flow to me very easily early on. Honestly, I really thought I had the whole world figured out at this point. I figured it was all up from here, but things changed. I ran into some challenges. I went through a really bad breakup. I had some other personal challenges come up and I went broke. It seemed like I could not catch a break. The deals that came to me so easy early on just would not show up and I was really beginning to doubt myself. I was still trying but in my heart I felt like I was beginning to fall apart and eventually I broke. I quit real estate and decided that I just wasn't meant to be successful at this. And although I didn't fall as far as Goggins did, I did spend the next few years of my life feeling constant doubt at everything I tried to do. I had let life beat me. I was a quitter. And this became a habit for me throughout most of my early 20s, quitting several careers because it got tough. I was running from challenges and looking for the path of least resistance. On the surface, it looked like I was trying really hard, but deep down, I was afraid of failure. In fact, I was terrified of it, and I just could not face the suffering required to be successful. And honestly, it wasn't until maybe a year or so ago that I actually realized what had been happening with my life. I figured out that all the self-improvement hacks, all the skills, none of that matters if you don't have a mindset that embraces embraces suffering and will never quit. Goggins realized the same thing. He figured out that even though he had changed his life, gotten into pararescue school, deep down he was still a fraud. And that's why when things got tough, he quit. But this next time, he wouldn't let that happen. He quit the pest control job and decided to go be a Navy SEAL. And in order to do that, he had to lose 107 pounds in less than three months, and he had to get a high enough score on the ASVAB test to qualify for Navy SEAL training. It seemed impossible, but he got it done. Done. And now the real challenge began. You see, losing 107 pounds, that's one thing, but SEAL training is a completely different beast. And this time, unlike with pararescue, Goggins didn't quit. Despite getting a broken kneecap, broken legs, and pneumonia, Goggins survived and became a Navy SEAL. This was the completion of a personal transformation for him. From a loser with no purpose, to trying but eventually failing to change his life, to his life completely falling apart, but then eventually rising and finally 
becoming the man he was meant to be. I started to call this the Goggins arc. In the beginning, you haven't received that call to adventure yet, so you're living for cheap pleasure and you lack purpose. Then something inside you calls you to be better, and you start listening to motivational podcasts, getting up early, improving your habits and your discipline. You start making progress, and it's great, but deep down, you haven't changed yet. Your mind is still weak, and when suffering comes, you quit. You give up on your dreams, and like Goggins, you descend into your own personal hell. You settle for mediocrity and loathe yourself deep down. Many people will stay here for the rest of their lives, but some, like Goggins, will pick themselves up and decide that this time they are not quitting no matter what. This is where I find myself at right now. I got back into real estate a little over a year ago, and I feel like this time, no matter what happens, I have to succeed. It honestly feels like God is telling me that the job's not finished yet, and this time I need to give it everything I've got. I need to stop letting doubt and fear control me, face the suffering, and accomplish my goals. Look at your own life and figure out where you're at in your own Goggins arc. What dreams have you had that you decided to quit on because things got too tough, or what's that dream you've been too afraid to pursue? If you want to truly respect yourself, you have to face these things and be willing to go through the suffering necessary to accomplish them. And this is the first harsh truth. Success is not about hacks or habits. It's about giving everything you've got. Because human beings need to hear this. They need to stop hearing these hacks on this and that. There's no f***ing hack, bro. There's no f***ing hack. Yeah, you may this and that and saunas and, this and all this shit that they, yeah, it's great. There is no f***ing life hack. To grow that thing, how do you grow it? Do it and do it and do it and do it. That's the hack. The hack is gonna suck. I hate these videos that tell you the hacks to get successful. I used to waste so much time on these things. It's like 10 things to do if you wanna get rich in 2024 and the answers are things like quit porn and wake up early. Like guys, that shit is not going to make you rich. That's the kind of stuff I did when I got my real estate license. It's all the hacks. It's the kind of stuff that makes you feel like you're making a ton of progress, but it's all surface level. And if you really wanna accomplish your goals, that is not enough. Think about these things kind of like Goggins having to pass the ASVAB test to get into the Navy. You pass the test, congrats. You're in the Navy, but now you've got Navy SEAL training and Hell Week. Let's see what you're really made of. All the little hacks, the quitting porn, the getting up at a decent time, things like that, those are the basic requirements that just get you in the game. They are not enough if you truly want to do something great. And I'm not trying to down on it if you're trying to get past a porn addiction or you struggle with eating junk food and you can't seem to stop. Like, if you get those things corrected, that's going to be a big accomplishment for you, and I do applaud you. But that's just the basic stuff. That's entry-level requirements, and you haven't proven shit. Yet. This isn't going to get you to your ultimate goal. Success is going to require everything of you, and it's going to be different for each person. It's like success goes out and finds the weak parts of you and forces you to face them. And if you don't have a mindset that is prepared to handle suffering and not quit, you're going to fail. Harsh truth number two. For a long time, my dating life was pretty non existent. Despite being jacked, reading all the dating books, and even being six feet tall, I was perma single, and it's like I was never talking to any girls. And I remember I would watch all these. YouTube videos on how to optimize your dating app profile. I was obsessed with turning my Hinge profile into this machine that got me all these matches. And it worked some. I got some dates out of it. It was like whatever, but it wasn't really what I wanted. And deep down, I kind of felt embarrassed of myself. Eventually, I had to be honest with myself and figure out why the heck my dating life sucked so much. And I realized the reason my dating life sucked is because I was afraid to talk to women. I was terrified of rejection. And that's why I liked the idea of getting girls on the dating app so much. It was this way for me to avoid this thing I was afraid of. But it's like I knew deep down the only way I was going to get the dating life I wanted was if I faced this fear. There was no avoiding it. I couldn't make my dating app profile so great that it just didn't matter. It was almost like the universe was telling me like, dude, I'm not going to give you what you want while you're too afraid to actually go talk to the girls. And so I had to face my fear. And not only did this improve my dating life, but it improved my self-respect. I was no longer running from this thing. It's like it almost didn't even matter if I was successful or not. Just the fact that I did the thing that I was afraid to do was enough to make me feel good about myself. Our second harsh truth is that the results you want are hidden in the work you're avoiding. Goggins figured this same thing out with the water. He had been afraid of the water in pararescue school, so when he decided to get his life together for good, he chose becoming a Navy SEAL because almost all of their training is in the water. There's something about life that the thing you least want to do is the thing you most need to do. If you need to get in shape, 
shape. There's all these different hacks you can do, but they never seem to work, do they? Diet hacks, easy workouts, just walk 10,000 steps a day and you'll lose weight. And maybe you get a little something, but it's not the real transformation you want. The only way to get that is to confront the work you're avoiding. If you dread the idea of going to the gym and having a really hard, intense 60 minute workout, that's probably exactly what you need to do. If you're running a business and you're afraid of making sales calls, maybe sales calls is exactly what you need to be doing. Face your fears. It's not even about the outcome. It's about the man you become when you stop running from things. Harsh truth number three. So this YouTube channel used to have a ton of videos on it. I took them down when I decided to take a break from posting. But every time I used to put a video out, I would tell myself, this video is gonna get millions of views. And then it wouldn't. It got to the point where I was making all kinds of excuses. I thought the algorithm was out to get me. I thought maybe I was shadow banned. But I went back and watched some of these videos and I realized they just suck. And that's why I got 2,000 views instead of 2 million views. Nobody was screwing me over but myself. And that's when I figured out this harsh truth. You are right where you deserve to be in life. You swear the coaches didn't like you in high school and that's why you didn't make the team, but honestly, you probably just weren't very good. The girl isn't stupid for rejecting you. You're probably just not a very attractive guy. Sure, there are obstacles in life. David Goggins' father beat him. He was illiterate till he was 16. He grew up in this small town that was very racist. He had all the excuses, but he figured out that no matter what happened to you in your past, you are the only one in control of what you do in the present. So many people want to blame their past or blame some sort of circumstance in their life for why they're where they're at, but real talk, you are exactly where you deserve to be in life. Even when you're sure you're the victim of something, eventually you'll look back and realize that you had a part to play in your own suffering. Even if the girl cheated on you and that's wrong, well, maybe you were acting like a weak, needy guy. And that doesn't justify her actions, but that's what happens when you act like that. When you just own this harsh truth that you're exactly where you deserve to be at in life, it allows you to fix things. You can't fix that the girl cheated on you, but you can fix yourself. You can't fix that the person hiring you chose somebody else for the job, but you can improve your social skills and your resume so that next time you do get the job. Harsh truth number four. A couple weeks ago, I was running behind schedule on getting my next YouTube video out. I needed to get the video out the next day and it was already the evening, so I had a choice to make. I could go to bed and then just get up, make the video the next day and post it the day late, or I could stay up all night and get the video out on time like I had promised myself. I decided to stay up. I finished the video around 3.30 in the morning and when I uploaded the video, I felt so good about myself. It didn't even matter how the video was going to perform. Just the fact that I had kept my word to myself and done the hard thing that I knew I needed to do was enough to make me feel good about myself. For most people, they make the outcome the thing that matters to them. In this case, that would have been how many views this video got. But I can't directly control how many views this video gets. And so to make that the thing that matters to me puts me in a weak position. It means I'm dependent on something that I cannot control. First truth number four is that goals aren't the point. That is the number one purpose in life is to better oneself. So that's the only purpose I need. So the reason I get up every day, even though there's no race or there's no school, or there's nothing in front of me is because I have pride in myself. Goals are just something you set so you have an inspiring direction to go in. The point is personal growth. It's all about the man you become on the journey. The effort you put in, the growth that you go through, these are things that are within your control. And that means that winning and losing is now within your control. When you do this, going to the gym and working hard becomes the goal and the six pack is just a byproduct of it. The right actions will end up leading to the outcome you want anyways. It's just that the person who focuses on the outcome is going to be lazy and entitled. They're going to be impatient because they don't actually want to do the work. They just want the results of the work. Whereas the person who focuses on the actions is going to have constant motivation and confidence because success and failure is within their control. Seriously, once you figure out how to change your mindset from goal oriented to action oriented, it will change your life. First truth number five. As a kid, I was skinny and not very strong and I got picked on by the more athletic kids in my neighborhood. This was painful at the time, but it became the future fuel that made me who I am today. I gravitated towards weightlifting in high school and I went from one of the worst athletes to one of the best athletes within a couple years. I had gone from skinny to muscular and it changed my whole life. This is our fifth harsh truth. There is no growth without pain. A lot of the things that you love and value in yourself in adulthood mm -hmm. are the light side of something that you were ashamed, fearful, disgusted by when you were younger. Yeah, I mean, I think that comes from overcoming 
a lot of people, you know, wonder, how did you become this? How did you become so vulnerable? How, did you be, how are you doing a podcast now when you were this kid? You overcame things. You fought them. And now this is what happens. This is on the other side of overcoming. When we're comfortable, we don't have the motivation to change. You have to learn to love and embrace the pain. Stop blaming it for your problems and playing the victim and realize that God has given you a gift that if you can use it, will turn you into something great. Now, someone with a similar mindset to David Goggins is 50 Cent. He grew up dirt poor, his mother was murdered, and he was shot nine times. Yet he became an iconic rapper and a business mogul worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Click on the video on screen if you want to learn about seven of his harsh truths that made him successful.